What up gang? As many of you may know, London has just opened up its latest transport infrastructure project, the Elizabeth Line. And like the budding little photographer that I am, and the transport enthusiast that I am, I was like, I want to be one of the first people down there to take photos and to make this place look sick. And upon arriving, well, about like an hour into it, I realised that I was a bit of a basic bitch photographer. Because <laughs> I was trying to get the Instagram bangers. I was like, I want to be one of the first people down there to take the sickest photos. I want to explore this before anyone else really gets a chance to take amazing photos, to try and get these photos to like agencies, to try and like somehow get my photos to be the one shared. Because I was like, that would be such like a, a nice thing for, for my photography ego, right? Um, but yeah, when I was down there, I was like, all my photos are the same. They're the same photos that everyone takes. The classic IG bangers where you've got a wide angle lens and you're low down to the floor and you're shooting up and you try to get this massive structure and you've got a little subject off into the distance. And I was just like, this, this ain't fun. And the photos are literally exactly the same as what everyone else was taking. And I was like, how is this creatively fulfilling? And in all honesty, it wasn't at all. And so I was like, JP, you need to snap out of this and you need to actually try and be creative, try and do something a little bit different. And so, here we are today, where we are going to be going through the my favourite photos that I took and photos that I think that are actually genuinely interesting. The volume of photos that we're going to talk about today is a lot lower, but hopefully the quality and the information that I share about these photos, about what I was thinking, about why I chose to do X, Y, Z, about what happened, how I set myself up for these shots, will then give you the inspiration to go and take photos on the Elizabeth line, but hopefully just generally think about photos in a different way because I found that that has been the most helpful thing for me to hear other photographers think about what they were looking for and what they were thinking as they were shooting to then apply that to my own work. And so before we get into this, I just want to say a huge, huge, huge thank you to Ken, Kirsty, Kelsey, Niv, Ira, Under Advertise, and Glenn for supporting me and this channel by buying me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com. I am overwhelmed with just how much support I'm getting um, and yeah, how much you guys seem to be liking the videos and finding them interesting and helpful. And so if you want to support the channel, buymeacoffee.com link and uh, yeah, let's get into this. This is our first image which I'm going to call the blue and gold tunnels for obvious reasons. Um, and this is really interesting because I had literally just shot my seventh perfectly symmetrical shot and I was like, this is really boring. I need to stop being a basic bitch and to try something different. So instead of being perfectly in the middle of the tunnel, I was like, okay, let's push off to the side. Let's try and just see, see what happens. And by doing so, I think we've created a really interesting effect because we've got the subject down here. Um, and they are kind of in the middle of all of these leading lines, kind of pulling you towards the direction that they're walking in. But as we've moved to the side, we have now obscured where they're going. And that starts to create a bit more of a story because there's, I guess there's two types of story. There's the immediately obvious, this is what's happened, this is therefore relatable. And then there's this sort of style where it's like, intriguing it allows you to start thinking what happened before what happened after where are they going what are they up to what are they doing and that is a level of story that you can kind of create in environments like this by not disguising but by making it less obvious what is going on and what's happening and not only that by pushing off to the side we have then been able to highlight the color contrast between the cold tunnel and then the warm concourse light up here and what's really interesting about this frame is usually subjects so the things you're trying to photograph are closer to you and they are warmer and warm light is typically more inviting when you think of like a um a like i don't know like a nice warm beach or something a nice sunny day versus like an ice cold dark overcast day you, you want to be in the nice warm environment typically and so in this frame, we've got the warm light as being on the outskirts, and then we have got the cold light, which is where the subject is going off to. And that to me is really interesting, because like, what sort of journey are they on? What sort of emotions are they feeling? And it doesn't necessarily mean anything, but that's just another way how you can create contrast and levels of interest. And as well as this, all of these lines up here 
they kind of start twisting and turning in really interesting ways. And that is also interesting because instead of having, well, I guess contrasting these perfectly straight lines that are going off into the distance, we now have these lines that are twisting and turning and are visually interesting themselves. And as these lines are twisting and turning, they're all kind of pulling you down towards the subject. And because they're so small in the frame, that then shows the, the vastness, the scale of this place. And as well, by having just a single person, that makes it so immediately obvious what you want to look at, what I, the photographer, want you, the viewer, to look at. And it also gives you a sense, a bit more sense of isolation, which I think is, yeah, what you feel when you're feeling cold, when you're feeling blue. So that's gold, blue and gold tunnel. So now we are on to what I think is the best photo that I took all day. It's of this woman on an escalator, which doesn't sound particularly interesting, but I absolutely love it. And if you disagree with me, then we, we can have a scrap about it. So the reason why I think this is so interesting is because I think there's a little bit of story to this and it's a minimal photo, but there's quite a lot of elements going on. And so I actually shot this photo as it is. So obviously cropped off the top of her head, you can't see who she is, but it starts making you think, okay, why is she the only one going down this escalator? Why is there no one going up on this escalator? What time of day it is? What time of day is it? What is going on? Why is she here? And all of the lines in the frame move in very similar directions. So I'm just gonna go over a bunch of them now. They're all going diagonally from left to right. I typically see photos from left to right because that's how I read books, from left to right. Whereas apparently in uh, people who read Hebrew look at images from right to left. So that is something interesting, bit tidbit for you. Um, and so we've got all these lines leading from left to right, but we've also got these other lines that are dissecting them. And it's a very interesting frame because everything is very straight, everything's very rigid. And you've got this woman who is also in very straight position. Her arms are the same, her legs are together and the same. She is also very straight. But the only variance that there is in terms of like the lines is the fact that she's wearing stuff that is still pretty straight, but there's a little bit of flow to it. Her legs obviously have a little bit of a curve where her calves are. And that is, that's interesting. Why is everything in this frame straight and directional? Whereas the clothes she's wearing are a bit more flabby. And so she breaks the pattern. The pattern is the straight lines and she breaks that. So our eye is drawn to the pattern breaker. And another thing that I think is really interesting is not only is this woman's clothing flowy, she has got yellow tights. Not many people wear yellow tights, do they? At least not in the UK, not many people wear yellow tights. But the light that she's in is very cool. But the light coming from underneath is this very tungsten, very warm light. And so her tights are complementing and matching the light that is coming out from underneath. And it's, it's very subtle. Let me undo these. It's very subtle, but I think that that really ties the image together because it feels almost deliberate without being deliberate. And that, I think, is some of the art in street photography. Okay, so now we're on to probably my second favorite photo. And this was an absolute fluke, but I think that is also the art of street photography is being ready for those flukes. And so I was trying to photograph this lady in pink. I was standing further over to the right and I was shooting pretty much like at her. And then I noticed, oh, actually there's this glass elevator lift, not American, um, lift that's here. And that was gonna create a reflection of her. And I was like, that's, that's an easy way to spice up this image. And then this guy walked into frame and it is just so beautifully timed. I am so over the moon with this image. And so, why is this so interesting? So obviously it's a reflection shot. So you've got these two on the right, these two on the left. But this guy is reflecting her. They have got the exact same uh, leg position, nice and together, nice and straight. Seems to be a common theme here. Um, and they're both standing very upright. Both got two hands up, taking a photo, but what I think is really interesting is she is taking a photo 
of what's going on, whereas he's taking a photo of him and what's going on. And that, I think, is is interesting, because it's like, okay, what what is this saying? Is it saying that, I don't know, there's an age difference, that the older generation typically take photos of things that they enjoy, and they have the, the satisfaction in just experiencing things. Whereas this guy's clearly of a younger generation, and he has to be in the photo. It doesn't have to be in the photo, but that's kind of what you can in, extrapolate from this. And then it's like, okay, well, he is wearing all dark clothing. Obviously, that's probably for religious reasons. I don't know. But he is that saying that because he has to be in the photo, he's not really experiencing life. Whereas she's in a bright pink, colourful outfit. And does it feel like she's really enjoying the moment for what it is? And I think that that just is so, it's so interesting. And I, yeah, I just keep looking at this photo going, that was, that is interesting. I don't think the, I think the competition is pretty good. Uh, not really sure how to improve it, but I think that the actual story within it and what you can see, what you can think about, what is, what's going on, I think is just so interesting. So this photo, bang. So I literally took this photo moments after the Bloom and Girl Tunnel that you just saw. And I was sticking with the same theme of, okay, use the lines that are in the tunnel that are present to create something interesting. And so we've got, I mean, I was actually inside this line here on the left-hand side. Um, and that has created really interesting leading lines. Because as you move closer towards stuff, you make them bigger in your frame. And so by getting right into this gap, I was able to make it look like these are some huge leading lines. And that then meant that I've got a bit of variance. I've got the contrast of one big, I guess like, I say singular line. It's lots of little lines, but it's one big element versus lots and lots and lots of stuff going on here. There's lots of detail up here. There's lots of variance. And that's interesting. That has created contrast, right? And all of these lines are leading off into the distance, which you can actually see. I don't know why I did the question mark there. <laughs> um, so you can tell, okay, these lines are all leading off to this point. They're moving in the direction of our character, who's the main person that you're looking at. And that leads to, okay, so now instead of having the question about where they're going, the question is, why is he running? Why is he clearly chipping it through through a train station? And I think that, yeah, I was just quite lucky because the train at the end here was waiting for a long, long time. And people were just running straight past me as I was chilling, leaning up against the wall. And this subject, I think, is not a perfect one, but is a very good example of a good subject for the scenario. Because it's very clear that he is, he is running. Right? There's also this other guy who's also running, but you can't really see him. But he is wearing dark clothes, which means that he really stands out against this bright, let's say bright white, bright blue, stony coloured wall. And so that creates contrast, which means that your eye is immediately drawn to him. And it gets you thinking, okay, so this guy's running. Why is he running? Is he running from something? Is he running to something? Is he... Uh, is he late? Is a train just about to go? Is this a train that he really needs to get? What is the story? Why does he care so much about getting this train? The train's every three minutes. The Elizabeth line is very efficient. Um, so yeah, it starts to create questions for you to, I guess, mull on as a viewer. So that's this photo. So we are now on to a photo that I'm gonna call the Escalator Girl. And I think this is sick. I was walking around Canary Wharf and I was like, yo, these are some wild, wild, wild escalators. Because I've seen glass escalators, um, but I've never seen any sort of like, are they lime green? Are they yellow? Don't really know. Um, they, wherever they are, they are funky. And so why I think this is so cool is because you, you've got the subject, which isn't particularly interesting. Let's be real. She, she's dark. She's on a dark background. No, not very easy to see. The main reason why we can see what's going on is that she's got a little bit of her, her legs on show, and so that then breaks up this pattern down here. So 
we can see the stuff next. Okay, so what does make this photo interesting is that we have got lots of lines all coming towards us. It's very, it's very liney photos. Very common theme in my images is lines. And so I was like, okay, so this is a clear escalator. What happens if I move down? What happens if I crouch down and see what's going on through here? And it wasn't deliberate. But I realized as I crouched down that you can see all of the other escalator lines coming through. And that was just all of a sudden magic. I was like, yo, I need to figure this out quickly. Because obviously you're moving down an escalator. You don't have much time. You gotta think and you gotta move quickly. And so the escalator we're on creates, or the side of the escalator creates this like barrier. And so it cleans up all of these other lines that are going on. And it's the same on this side where you've got some reflections in there. It makes the image feel a lot cleaner. And by having a cleaner image, that is then allowing us to then focus on the subject. And so I was thinking, okay, how would I make this photo better? I would keep the, the framing all the same, but I'd probably want to have a subject that is slightly more interesting. And so they'd probably have to be wearing something bright. So then see them be contrasting against this. Um, but then I was thinking, actually, that is quite a lot of commitment and it's kind of quite creepy um, to wait for someone to come onto the escalator, to then follow them down, to make sure that there's a significant gap in between you and them to create this sort of effect. And yeah, I thought that that's starting to get a little invasive. I think that when you're on the street and there's lots of other people going around, that's fine. But I think that you can make people uncomfortable by just pointing your camera at them in general, but to like follow them with a the camera, to be waiting at the top, to see them walk past, and obviously your eyes light up a little bit, because you're like, this is gonna be it. Um, and yeah, I think that that's how you'd improve this photo, but I don't think that that's particularly necessary. So I hope that you found that interesting. That was a bit of a free talking ramble uh, about my time on the Lizzie line. I, yeah, I'm so happy with how these photos came out. Um, and the other 1.4 thousand, we will ignore because that I think is, that's how we need to be. We need to be more creative. We need to try different things. We need to think about photos a little bit more and to not feel bogged down by always having to take bangers. Bangers come through iteration and repetition and through trying different things. And that is a, something that we need to cultivate more as creatives ourselves because it's very easy to think, no one's gonna like this photo on Instagram. But I think that is something that we have got to focus on. And so hopefully this channel gives you some sort of inspiration and some sort of confidence to go out and shoot something different. But yeah, thank you to every single one of you who supports the channel through buymeacoffee.com. There's free presets there. There's a um, Photoshop file so you can download um, a wide boy image to make Instagram carousels. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff on there that you can go and enjoy. So, yeah, I guess until next time. Peace.